launching some of the activities of Jakai Debt Trust Foundation. Now we've collectively been thinking what can we do to get, get our people, to improve the lives of our own people, and also to honor the pledge we made. The His Royal Highness the Emir of Mubi took his time and will to give some of us traditional titles. And we promised him that we'll do our best. We promised him that we'll be worthy of the honor he bestowed on us. We also promised him that we work hard for the people of the Mubi Emirate as a whole. So it is now dependent on us to honor our promises and pledges to him. And after consultations and consulting His Royal Highness, the foundation became a ready vehicle to do some work for the Emirates. So we thank the Emir, His Royal Highness, the council members for giving us this opportunity to collectively work together for the benefit of our own people. So we thought that the best thing to do is to select some projects that will be of direct impact on the people. And we did. And we came here today to take off on some of these activities. Many more are coming. And I thank our development partners, the Northeast Development Commission, the sponsored some of the events here today. We also thank very much the Universal Basic Education also sponsoring some of the events here today. May I remind all of us, since I will not speak again, that the materials that we are going to give out today, especially to libraries, will be carefully monitored according to government regulations. So each principal is going to collect these books, and each principal will be held responsible for making sure that the books are in the library, as intended. Our monitoring teams will come after us some time to check and make sure and take pictures, and we'll send the pictures back to our sponsors to ensure that we've complied with the objectives of these programs. We also have other plans on ground. These plans cannot materialize if we are not able to fully utilize the first phase of our activities. So please, we want to make sure that we are also worthy of being supported continuously. So let's make use of the facilities we have judiciously. And also, let's continue to work with the principles and objectives of today's meeting. I thank you all for listening. I thank you all for coming. And I also thank you for giving me this privilege. May we please put our hands together in appreciation to this And schooling was disrupted. Um, there is a need for us to enlighten our youth and provide them with opportunities to make a better life for themselves.
Um, I would also like to encourage the Mubi Emirates and the Adamawa State Government to prioritize youth empowerment for a better society. Isolating young people, intentionally or unintentionally, especially in rural areas where they are jobless, can contribute to the already mentioned menaces of drug abuse, illegal and criminal activities, depression, rural urban migration, and so on. I would like to propose the following mechanisms to make our youth positive contributors to our society. First, conducting entrepreneurship training and capacity building in areas such as leadership, advocacy, gender awareness, communication, and life skills. Secondly, provision of English language and computer skill courses in line with work requirements and modern life. Community awareness regarding importance of education and knowledge. And then also very important is sensitizing parents for their children to complete and follow up, encourage and support them to achieve. Lastly, we should also learn to foster their role in society, listen to their ideas and suggestions. The implications of the aforementioned, therefore, is that empowering and including youth in the work environment to reduce unemployment, crime, and drug abuse. I would once more like to commend the Jakardia Foundation for this initiative and to encourage them not to relent in their intervention towards youth sensitization and empowerment. The NEDC itself inaugurated the Board of Trustees of the Education Endowment Fund which has as its major mandate human capacity development. The fund shall provide scholarships as well as provide opportunities to youths on various skills acquisition programs, amongst others. Currently, the NEDC's ICT at the Federal College of Yola has in it over 400 youths undergoing ICT training, which will last for about three months. This is the second phase of such training, which shows the NEDC's commitment to youth empowerment. While the NEDC will continue to pursue its vision for the Northeast in line with its mandates, there still exist issues around security. The only way to overcome these challenges is through concerted efforts, collaboration, and increased funding. The full name is Idris Bello. Sorry for the mix up, sir. Representative of His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Adamawa State, the Representative of the Landing of Adamawa, the Highness the Emir of Mubi, the Chairman of the Cardia Foundation, other personalities, I say good morning all. Uh, first of all, let me really thank the Jakarta movie for this laudable program she's doing to be. In fact, uh, when I came here this morning, I'm really pleased with what I've seen. And I'm honored and hum humbled to be part of this great occasion. This occasion of like-minded people committed to the guiding and nurturing of our youth on the right path to positive outcomes. I'm told to send just about 15 minutes to talk about the effects of substance abuse. If I want to talk much on this, I think we are going to take much of our time. But because of timing, I'm going to try as much as possible to lump it together. Number one, I said the consumption of illicit substance by our human youth has an array of health and social implications to the user themselves, to their family, to their friends, and their immediate community. So what then, if we are talking of substance abuse, what do we mean about substance abuse? Here I say it is excessive use of psychoactive substances, such as illegal substances, e.g. heroin, cannabis, sativa, cocaine, alcohol. We also have socially acceptable beverage, like the palm wine, the local gin, we call it gogoro. We have distilled palm wine, we have burkutu, we have fermented guinea corn, Taking of pain medications again is part of the substance abuse, like the tramadol, pentazosine. We have things like that, I mean, you know, locally found in our environment. We have the monkey tail, which is a mixture of cannabis, 
with other cocktail of other substances. We have the taking of the tom tom uh, mixed in the uh, like like a Sierra Coca Cola. We have the lizard dung. We have the cow dung. We have the nail polish. We have the paint uh, paint remover. We have early morning of sniffing of drainages, open gutters, septic tanks. All these have adverse effects consequences which inevitably affect the quality of people's life. Like you can see, substances, you see a lot of devices, you know, people are using just to abuse and to get high. I say, are we going to talk of the number of persons who die from drug, drug overdose every yearly, or the loss of productivity due to absenteeism at work, the fatal road accidents that we have every now and then, all these are mainly due to the substance abuses. We can all perceive the graphic representation of the pandemic nature of drug abuse, which is a burden on all of us as a nation. We are impacted either directly or indirectly. Victor. People who use drugs, especially the young ones, experience problems such as academic difficulties. We have health related the problems, the including mental health, poor well. mm. peer yeah. relationship, and involvement with law enforcement agencies. We also have the implication My are divided it into social, physical, and psychological. Number one, the social implications are loss of job, family disintegration, stealing, expulsion from school, delinquency, criminal offenses such as rape, armed robbery, this insurgence, to mention but if you have destitution, premature death, road traffic accidents, courtism in schools, mental illness, spread of communicable diseases. Also physically, it leads to brain damage, liver damage, hypertension, excessive heartbeat, chronic bleeding, cancer, harm to the unborn babies, impaired visual ability, kidney damage or failure. AIDS. Psychologically, it leads to sleeplessness, anxiety, depression, psychosis, craving desires, hallucinogens, personal impaired judgment, reduced coordination, slow reaction in time, and what have you. The stated consequences are by no means exaggerated as a growing number of our youth are either languishing in correctional facilities across the globe for drug trafficking or in mental health facilities due to abuse of these substances. Please permit me to stand on the existing protocol. His Royal Highness, with your kind permission, I am honored to be invited to this very important and auspicious event, especially as it's, it's a conversation about education of our children. I must say that we must continue this conversation until we change the narrative on all issues around education. Thank you very much, Jakadia, for this laudable project and a beautiful way of giving back to the society. It is a commendable legacy that calls for all to engage with. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, His Royal Highness, education is a right, and it is necessary to create awareness of the value of education in our communities. Like the Jakadia Foundation, whose goal and target is to reach students, parents, guardians, community and their leaders, teachers in schools, and every stakeholder. Education is the best path out of the grim, out of the grim cycle of poverty so many are living in. The engagement in education of our children from most low socioeconomic communities in developing countries like ours is low. This situation results from low enrollment rates and frequent dropouts, of, dropouts for some of those who manage to be enrolled. Consequently, the low enrollment rate and frequent dropout trends leads to poor academic development in these communities and subsequent and subsequently increase in illiteracy. 
literature mentions unavailability of schools in some areas, inadequate classes, and high level of poverty in communities, which limit parents' ability to pay direct costs of education that leads to rise in opportunity costs among children attending school as prominent reason for this setback. Hence, we see parents preferring boys to go to school and girls remaining at home because they do not have the wherewithal to take all the children to school. These situations are there, we know, are evident. We have also identified lack of community initiative and participation in education as another hindrance to the development of education in our communities. Therefore, there's the need to seek to explore stakeholders' perspective on community mobilization on the benefits of education and its impact as well as civic responsibility and political participation in a democracy like ours. You don't go to school, you'll be used as a thug. For if democracy is to function, citizens must have knowledge on what is happening and why it is happening. So I ask these questions. What type of knowledge and education create citizens who can contribute and be active? What is entailed in being an enlightened citizen? Who defines that? And is it a matter that can be a, be a part of democratic dialogue? What type of knowledge is needed to be able to make decisions and exercise accountability? Okay. Relevant discussions concerning knowledge must be taught on a broad perspective. Discussions must occur about how knowledge is developed, disseminated and networked in light of community demand of an enlightened and critically reflected public. This discussion connects the responsibilities and duties of preschools, that's primary, primary, primary schools, the school curriculum, secondary and tertiary education content, as well as the function of democratic education. Thus, the need for all hands to be on deck in addressing the issues in education. Hence, my clarion call on youths, women, government, community leaders, religious, traditional leaders, elites, and parents, particularly mothers, towards achieving the objectives, the following objectives. One, education awareness and sensitization of people like we are doing now, and all stakeholders to ensure they understand the advantages and benefits of education, particularly for young people and women. Relationship between building, relationship building through a continuous process of dialogue to create trust be between and among the various groups of stakeholders for a long-term community development. And that is why we must sustain Jakadia Foundation. Participation of all stakeholders, including empowerment of communities to take responsibility to educate girl children and keep children away from drugs like we have heard, and negative vices urging the students to shun illicit drugs, drug intake by, avoid, by avoiding bad influence and focusing more on their studies. A flexible and adaptable process in the face of the prevailing social perception of the education of girls and the, dis and the disadvantaged communities. To promote participation of all stakeholders in education and development initiatives to develop a team of community development activists, CDAs I call them, for sustainability of this project in the long term. To initiate a high quality community library and information center that will benefit the rural primary and secondary schools, community-based organizations, and even researchers. So what can we do to improve schools, uh, school attendance, retention, completion, and improve performance in schools so that children get better quality information as the development of, as the development of uh, relevant skill sets. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, our royal father, suggestions I believe should be doable, they should be clear and strategic. Hence, I will put these suggestions in segments. Let me start with the government's rules. We are lucky 
that the administration of His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Adamawa State, Right Honorable Ahmadu Omar Rufintiri, has placed very high premium on education. Evidence abound. For our children to want to come to school, stay in school, and finish school, our schools must be safe and comfortable. Have welcoming classrooms, should have functional curriculum, which must be right and prepare children for life. Provide evidence-based education with supportive and skilled teachers so that all children get clear, consistent message no matter where they are going to school. Some of our teachers in our classrooms today, I tell you, have no business with teaching. Teaching is a serious, serious business. There are several reasons why children, especially girls, do not stay in school or learn. Therefore, for us to achieve all this, so that no child, especially girls, are left behind, government should endeavor to do the following. One, government should endeavor to engage in collaborative research that will produce reports for evidence-based decisions. Government should be able to know why a school is cited where it is cited, how many classrooms are needed, why you are producing, how many teachers should be in that school. This, uh, this, this can only be achieved if we have evidence-based uh, evidence, evidence through research, through evidence gathering, so that distribution of e teachers can be done equitably. You go to schools and you find some schools with only two teachers, and probably the two teachers are even religious teachers. Who is teaching the mathematics? Who is teaching the English? Who is teaching the other subjects? Nobody. Why you come to our urban centers and cities, you find piles of student of teachers with no students to even teach because there are too many. The ratio is is not I mean the ratio is not comparable because the teachers are too many and the children are few. So, government should be able to take decisions based on evidence. There should be a synergy between demand and supply for teachers. Great, gratefully, the state has three tertiary institutions that supply teachers. We have the Federal College of Education, Yola. We have College of Education, uh, Adama State College of Education, Hong. And we have Adama State University. They all churn out teachers every year. How is the relationship between the demand, the, the consumers of teachers, and the producers of teachers? That is the economics of education. The supply and the demand must have synergy. Gender must be at the center of all discussions, especially in education. The mention of gender, people think that we are talking about women. No, we are talking about the needs of women, girls, and boys. If you are building toilets, how many are you keeping for girls and how many are you keeping for boys? If you are building classrooms, are you taking girls into consideration? If you are providing library, are you taking boys' and girls' needs into consideration? During break time, do we have skilled teachers to take care of children? You realize that in most schools, during break, teachers are also on break, forgetting that it is during break that they should even work. But teachers do not know. They think that it is time for them to rest. Meanwhile, our children, boys and girls, are having crisis and they need the teachers at that time. So do we have, uh, do we have a gender responsive education sector plan? Children with special needs, the dumb, the hearing impaired, those that cannot talk, those that cannot see, they also need to be planned for. They need to go to school. How has the government been able to achieve that? We should be able to make relevant, deliberate policies and enforce them. If we before I start this speech, and I want to introduce the that if you ask me what is my basic qualification, I will say I will teach a girl too. Even now, if you ask what is education, I will explain to you. <laughs> education is the process of development which goes on as long as a person lives.
And the agent is what happened to you going today you are born, today you die. So let, let me start my speech. The representative of His Excellency, Right Honorable Amadou Morfitri, the Governor of Adam Altes, heavily represented by Madawaki Mubi, National Assembly members here present, all ministers here present, speaker and members of Adam Altes, the Assembly present, the Secretary of State of Men, all commissioners. The Managing Director of the Development Commission, the Executive Secretary of Universal Basic Education, the Chairperson of the Academy of Rural Fund Foundation, Chairman of the Local Government of the Council of Representatives, Members of the Union of the Council, District Heads, and Distinguished Guests, Gentlemen of the Great Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Ta'ala Wa Barakatuh. Let me also welcome other distinguished guests who have come from far and near to pray this moment, which is used from the station program organized by the Dead Brothers Fund, chaired by one of our illustrious brothers, Professor Lagi Hamalai Vidakadi I would also like to use this opportunity to commend the effort of the North Peace Development Commission and Universal Test Education Commission for their total support to see that the Zakadia Trust Foundation comes to reality. And therefore, call on the government and non-government organizing groups and individuals to join together to support the foundation as a project. <laughs> foundation will benefit the entire people of Germany. Adam Aster and the country as well. Finally, I want to welcome the presenting of the executive governor and as his famous guest to move it. And to this speech organized, I wish you a happy stay in your and safe journey back to your respective places. As, thank you very much, my good point of relation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When others depart to the first order. Thank you. Mungo de Mungo de Kodi. Allah, thank you, Tara Munan Mafia. So, me, Eden Wan Nantan. Mungo. Love you, my kid and grado. Love you, my kid and grado.